Hey, how's it going? And today we're going to be covering what I think is kind of an advanced concept. This has taken me years to kind of get to this point where I can have an idea and then just do experiments to try to make it happen. And so I hope you get some value out of this because I don't think there's a lot of content like this out there. This could be for, let's say, a text-based game where there's you need different instances of arrays that have data in them, like all different kinds of data, like trivia or whatever. So this could be where you need a bunch of instances of arrays and the player can go access these different arrays of information. That just has a lot of possibility. I just call this instances of arrays. I just wanna show you the proof of concept of this. So I do appreciate you checking this out. I think you'll get something out of it. I think you're gonna get something out of this you won't get anywhere else on the internet. Let's get started on this. So like I said, this is just gonna be quick and dirty because I'm just gonna show you the proof of concept on this. And there's other ways to do this, I'm sure. This is just my implementation of doing it. So the first thing is I want to have a display to show that we are in fact accessing these arrays. And I'm gonna create six arrays. And so what I'm gonna do is create a user widget real quick, just so we have a display to look at. So I'll come up here and go to user widget, double click into it, and I'm gonna go ahead and dock this. And we're just going to get a canvas panel like that. And then we're just going to get some text. That's all we're going to do. And I'll just pop this text right there. I'm just going to make the font a little bit bigger. And we'll size the content. And that's all we need to do for right now. And I'll just leave it called New Widget Blueprint. Okay, now the next thing I want to do is I want to create a blueprint class and out of that class we're going to create instances so those classes are going to have an array in it so what I'm going to do is I'm going to right click and create a blueprint class go to actor and I will just call this BP underscore array okay and then I'm going to double click into it and I'm just going to add a cube so we just have a visual representation of the blueprint in the scene. Then I'm going to go up here, or I'm just going to come over here, and I'm going to create an array. So, And it's going to be of text. So I'm just going to put in text here, and it's going to be an array. In fact, let me call this array, text array, just so I know that it's uh, what I'm looking for. And it does need to be instance editable. We'll compile and save. And we need to come over here and of course make it an array, right? I need to compile again. We can put as many elements in here as we want. I'm just putting in three, just so you can see. We can put as many as we want in here. So it's an array that has three placeholders in it, right? This is our blueprint array class. And what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to drag it into the scene. There's one instance. And I'm just going to drag in six of these. Three, four, I'm trying to put them in order. Five, six. So what we have in our scene right now is our six instances of this class. And each instance has an array in it. And that array could be of any size. Right now it just has three. Next what I'm going to do is create a master blueprint that's going to hold the references to all these arrays. And to me, this is kind of the key of this whole thing working. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to right click and we're going to create another blueprint, an actor, and I'm going to call this BP underscore master. And in here, this is the interesting part to me. We're going to create an array that's going to hold a reference to all these instances. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to double click into this. I'm going to go to variable and I'm going to call this arrays. And it is going to be of the BP array. See right here, an object reference and it needs to be instance editable. So and I need to come over here and set it as an array. So this is a array that's gonna hold references 
to all those instances of our arrays. So over here, I know I dragged in six, and I could make this as many as I wanted, but we're going to put in one, two, three, four, five, six, so we can hold all of our arrays, and I'll compile and save. Now we're also going to use this blueprint to cycle through the arrays. So what I'm going to do for that is I need to create an integer so that we can loop. So I'm going to get integer here, integer, and this is just an integer. And this is not an array, it's just a single. And we can make an instance editable too. And then we're done. I'm going to come over here now into the event graph. And there's just a few things I'm going to do. So the first thing I'm going to do, and we're about halfway done. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create our blueprint widget, our user interface. So I'm going to go create widget here. And we're going to get our new widget blueprint right there. I don't need this tick, so I'm going to delete it. And I'm just going to go add to player screen. And that's all we need to do there for that. Now on event begin, now not on event begin play. Oh, I messed up here. I need to put this on event begin play. Sorry about that. Okay, so the next thing we're going to do is I'm just going to create, drive this off of a keyboard press. So I'm just going to go keyboard one here. And then what we're going to do is I'm going to, I want to be able to cycle through my array. So I'm going to press control and drag here. I'm going to press alt and drag here. And then I'm going to search for an add node. Add right there. And this is going to go into here. And this is going to be one. And then I'm going to get this array right here get array, and I'm going to drag off of here and go get a copy of it, right? And then this is going to go into here, and this will go into here to drive us through our array. Now this value here, I need to compile, needs to be negative one, so when we add one, it starts at zero. And there we go. So now with this, I'm just going to plug this into here. So we have a way now to cycle through our arrays. And the next thing we're going to do, now that we have a reference to our arrays, is I should be able to get our text arrays. So get text arrays here, right? And then I can get array right here. And we can just leave it at we can just leave this at zero. If we had more items in the array, we would need the cycle here. Now, the next thing I need to do is we need to get this information over to our user interface. So I actually need to create an event dispatcher here. And I'll leave it called new event dispatcher. And I can compile. And I need to add an input for our text. So here where it says input, we're just going to go add. And here it's going to be for text. Compile and save that. And then I'm going to go ahead and drag this onto the scene and go call. And all we got to do now is plug this into here and this into here. So now what we've created is our user interface here. And then every time I press one, I'm going to cycle through the arrays because we're going to have a, an array of arrays essentially and then I'm going to get the top first element of each array so that part is done so we're actually done in here I just need to come here and I need to drag this into the scene I'll just put it over here in the corner and what I need to do for it I need to make it so I can have input it so I'm going to put zero one one input there and now here this is this is a cool part You'll see here, we can add our arrays here, right here. And I ended up doing this because this is really a foolproof way of everything hooking up. So I'll just do one there, two, three, four, 
five, and then six. And you'll see why I'm going through this kind of fast because if I built this whole thing out, I could be doing this for hours. So I'm gonna click this first one here, this first instance of the array. And I'm just gonna type in here, array one, right? And this is my proof of concept here. Then I'm gonna type in array, array two, and array three. Well, you get what I'm doing. So I'm just gonna put a four. And then here I'm gonna put a five. I just want you to see that I'm access all of these instances. A six, so they're all different from each other, right? Okay, so now I'm just gonna go ahead and save all. So the last thing that we have to do is just hook this up on our user widget here. So to do that, I just need to make sure this text block is a variable. I should have done that originally and compile and save that. And then I'm just gonna go over to the graph side of things. And then on event, not pre-construct, but on event construct, we need to make a reference to our BP master. So I'm just gonna go get actor of class here. And I could be doing this with a blueprint interface or something, but I'm just doing it this way for convenience. Uh, get actor of class and it's BP master right there. And once we've got that reference, now we can get bind to that event dispatcher. So I'm gonna just drag off of here and go assign new event dispatcher right here. And I've been doing a lot of event dispatcher tutorials lately. Now I'm gonna get here and get this, get text, drag off of here, and I'm gonna go set text, right? And then this simply goes in here, and this simply goes in there. And that's the whole thing. And so if I didn't miss a step, what should happen is when I hit play and I press one, you'll see that we're accessing the first element of each array. So what I've created here is instances of arrays. And then you'll see that I have the ability to access all of those arrays in each of those instances. So I think it's pretty cool. And I think it doesn't take much imagination to see the potential that this has. So anyway, let's see if it works. I'm gonna hit play. And then it says text block. And when I press one, it should say array one. Oh, the array one, array two, array three, A4, A5, A6. And that's it. And that stop and see if I get any errors and I don't get any errors. So this seems to be working. I really hope you appreciate this. I felt like this is a really cool concept that has a lot of potential. So I'm happy to share it with subscribers of the channel and take care, have a great day, and I'll talk to you next time.